As we look into the night sky, there lie billions of stars spread across galaxies which themselves are spread across in the universe. We all have thought of space travel at least once in our life. But the reality of space is not so beautiful. It's just extremely big and mostly empty. In fact, space is so big that ordinary units like miles and kilometers would make it almost impossible to imagine its true size. The fastest way to travel in space is by traveling at the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second. And if you want to travel faster than that, well, you'll have to take it up with Mr. Einstein. Unfortunately, only electromagnetic radiation is capable of traveling at that speed. And even at the speed of light, it would take about 27,000 years to reach the center of our Milky Way galaxy from the Earth, let alone the observable universe. But we humans have always tried to reach for the stars even when they might seem out of our reach. For practical purposes though, the limit for our reach is decided by the energy we have. For most operations, the rockets in spaceships are helpful for maneuvering but even those fail to provide energy for large distances. Another option is the use of energy from our star, the Sun. By installing solar panels into satellites and space probes, the supply of energy can be ensured. But again, we face a problem here. Solar energy can be an excellent power source for the inner solar system. But outside the orbit of Jupiter, solar energy is too weak to be used in photovoltaic conversion. Therefore, nuclear power is used in spacecraft for deep space exploration. Nuclear power is an excellent energy source for long-distance space missions because nuclear energy not only provides way more power than photovoltaic cells, but it also has a much longer lifespan. Nuclear power is utilized for space flights in RTGs or radioisotope thermoelectric generators. RTGs are devices that use an array of thermocouples to convert the heat from decay of radioactive material into electricity. We all know that if we put a metal rod near fire, it will get hot rapidly. But there is one more phenomenon happening there. That phenomenon is the Seebeck effect that is used in thermoelectric generators. We know that in metals, heat is conducted easily because the electrons are free to move. But those electrons can also carry charge. Thus, if a metal rod is placed in a temperature gradient, then an electric potential will be developed between the two ends, resulting in the Seebeck effect. This effect is named after physicist Thomas Johann Seebeck. He observed the deflection of a compass magnet when a circuit made of two dissimilar metals had junctions at different temperatures. The reason behind this was that the movement of electrons was different in different metals. This created a potential difference that caused electric current in the circuit and therefore a magnetic field around the wires that deflected the compass. The voltage produced called the Seebeck voltage is directly proportional to the temperature difference between the two junctions. The device that produces a temperature dependent voltage as a result of the Seebeck effect is called a thermocouple. A radioisotope electric generator needs a large amount of voltage. Therefore, a large number of thermocouples are connected in series to produce high voltage. Moreover, the radioactive element used as a fuel in RTGs must have a long enough half-life so that it releases energy for a considerable amount of time. In addition, the radiation from the radioactive element should be easily absorbed and transformed into thermal radiation. To comply with all these needs, plutonium-238 is used as a fuel. Plutonium-238 has a half-life of 87.7 years, meaning it takes that long for its heat output to reduce to half. Also, it has the lowest shielding requirements because of very low gamma and neutron radiation. So, plutonium is used in RTGs in the form of plutonium dioxide. To block the alpha particles generated by radiation, the plutonium pellets are clad with iridium. This is then placed in a graphite shell and assembled into a complete module. 
These modules, called general purpose heat source modules, are then stacked together with thermocouples. For dissipation of heat from the generator, radiator fins are provided. RTGs need no maintenance since they do not have any moving parts. They have been used in numerous space missions including Curiosity rover, Cassini, New Horizons, Voyager 1, Voyager 2 and even in the Apollo program. So guys, nuclear power has a wide range of scope for use in space. Maybe one day we will be closer to traveling into interstellar space with the use of more such advanced technology. But until that day comes, don't stop looking into that night sky for answers. Who knows, maybe it's not so empty after all. We'll see you next time on Skilling and until then, bye.